You know, I think the big thing for us is consistency, you know. We'll have amazing games, you know, we'll perform the, as a team really well. Good afternoon, welcome to Dingwall and a very happy new year to you from all of us here at RCFC TV. The Staggies, of course, as you just saw there, rang in 2021 with that fabulous victory down in Edinburgh on Wednesday night. Can they make it two wins from two and earn a first home victory in the league since the opening day of the season all the way back on the 1st of August? St Johnston, the visitors to the Highlands today and we've got full live commentary right the way through this afternoon on RCFC TV. Joining us in the studio, we have the Staggies defender, Callum Morris. Callum, Happy New Year and welcome. Yeah, and to you, yes. Yeah. Great to be here. And of course, as ever, we've got our very own Stephen Craig and another Northern Ireland stalwart at the end of the <laughs> desk there. How are you, Craigs? I'm very well. I'm looking forward to the game. You know, I think you touched on it there. Can they make it back-to-back -back wins? And that just allows the team to get up the pitch. So a real tough test this afternoon, but one we're certainly looking forward to. Yeah, Callum, I'm sure you'd love to be out there on the green stuff behind us rather than warming our chair with your backside this afternoon. How's no, the hamstring? Yep. Uh, it's not too bad. It's um, I've had a lot worse than this, so hopefully um, a few more days let me back into training. Um, but yeah, the same. I'm looking looking forward to seeing the boys in action today, see if we can uh, get a bounce from, from Wednesday's win and, and pick up another three points. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. I think it was over 500 minutes since County scored the goal, never mind won a game in a competitive fixture. What does a victory like that do for the club and the confidence around the place? Yeah, it's massive. Um, I think on generally this season, we've actually played quite well in games. It's been both boxes where we've struggled, um, obviously scoring goals and, and, and conceding at the same time. So to couple up the clean sheet, scoring the two goals from open play, a lot of strong performance from the boys Wednesday night. Um, it's going to give us a massive boost going into a, a home game, especially against a team um, who have kind of fared quite similar to us this season. So hopefully um, more of the same again. Yeah, Craigs, you and I did the game mm. on Wednesday night. You were very impressed with not only how County attacked, but how they nullified hip threats as well. It was a good all-round display. It was, and you know, having watched the majority of the games, I would probably say that's the best performance of the season. Now, the win against Celtic in the Cup probably grabs all the headlines. But I just think how they went about the business on Wednesday night. They didn't start very well. They looked nervous. They looked edgy. They got through that spell. Once that first goal arrived, you know, I think you said it there, they nullified Hibbs' threat. They took everything away from them. They looked very assured. They didn't look as if they were going to concede a goal. Yeah. You know, and that hasn't happened very often. Callum's right. Players played above themselves. They produced probably their best individual performances of the season, some of them. But now it's about replicating and doing it again. That's got to be the catalyst for Ross County to get themselves up. Beach and Johnston today, you came above them on the table. That's a huge lift that would give the players and the staff. Yeah, of course, off the foot of the table, Callum. Psychologically, what does that do as well? It's been a long time coming just to, to raise yourselves off the foot of the table and get away from that danger zone a little bit. Yeah, um, I think it just proves how quickly things change in football. If you look back a couple of weeks at bottom of the league, we get beat off Hamilton out here, who are obviously a direct rival at the minute. Yeah. Um, you get one win, and, and like Stephen was saying, uh, we can uh, win again today, and other results, we can, I think we can go up to ninth. Um, mm. So it is, it's, it's massive, there's, there's, a, there's a carrot hanging there for us to jump up the table again, um, but it's all about the consistency, it's all about us replicating that performance on Wednesday, like it's been spoken about, um, and, and taking that three points, I think the results are key right now, because like I said, we've had good performances in the past this season, and not taking anything from the game. So we've got to make sure that we make these good performances count now and start taking points and uh, climb the table. Yeah, very much so. Well, let's take a look at what is happening around the country this afternoon. There is a full card of Scottish Premiership fixtures today, starting in Govan at Ibrox. The small matter 
of an old firm derby. And if you weren't watching that one, I can tell you it was a massive victory for Rangers over Celtic. Joe Aribo's header deflecting in off Callum McGregor from a corner midway through the second half. And that following near Beaton's dismissal for Celtic. So a massive, possibly decisive blow struck by Steven Gerrard's men in the title race. Elsewhere, Aberdeen hosting Dundee United in a new firm derby. Hibs up against Livingston. And of course, here in Dingwall, Ross County taking on St Johnston. This then is how the table looks with five fixtures remaining this afternoon. As the guys were explaining, Ross County can actually make some serious inroads in that bottom six today if they were to beat St Johnston. They will overtake the Perth side and at least make it up beyond them in the table as they look to climb away from the danger zone. And at the top, Rangers now 19 points clear despite Celtic's three games in hand. So just looking at that, Crags, it's a massive incentive for Ross County to back up a good result with another one today. It is. And that's you know probably what's been missing throughout this season is being able to string results together. I think the only time they've had back-to-back league wins was the first and second match day of the season. But what we said the other night was, at some stage they needed to throw in a shock result just to make the other teams above look over the shoulder. Mm. And I don't think many people envisaged County going to Easter Road, first of all winning the game, but actually playing as well and being as confident with their play. So the likes of Hamilton, St Johnston, Motherwell, Kilmarnock are all looked over the shoulder and thought, I can't believe they've won that game. So what you have to do then is, once you've got that little bit of momentum, back it up and push on and make them look again, make them look again. And actually, you're not that far off top six. Never mind finishing 12th. You're not that far yeah. off top six. It could be a long-term aim, but it's certainly something worth aiming for. Yeah, it's a congested old table, Callum. How much do the players actually look at the standings and pay attention to all the ups and downs over the course of a season? Um, <clears throat> I think most players individually might have a little look here and there, but we've not really been focused on the table. Um, we've been focused on fixing what's been going wrong in the group and making sure we can um, turn what a lot of negatives into positives going forward. Um, obviously we're winning games you're going to jump up the league but it's each game as it comes um, obviously Wednesday a big positive and like I've said before it's about using that and harnessing it and taking into the day and hopefully get another three points So what has been the focus since John Hughes has come in what have you been looking to address from the previous era? Uh, I'm not sure the manager's had all that much time to really yeah, so many games nail stuff down we've been, it's just recover play recover play but I think um, the main thing is just being maybe a bit more um, resilient, taking stuff on the chin and, and getting back up and, and fighting back. And obviously the, the Celtic part with it being the first game, I thought it was a good performance from the boys, although it was 2-0. Uh, a lot of positives out there. I mean, the, the same Mirren game, I mean, two red cards kind of killed yeah. the game. Um, but obviously having the full complement of 11 Wednesday and putting in a great performance, um, it's starting, it's more the, the mentality of, of the boys has maybe changed a little bit um, and freshened the place up. So hopefully we can uh, use that again today and, and get the three points. Yeah, here's hoping. Well, John Hughes got his first victory as Ross County manager against Hibernian in his old stomping ground in Leith on Wednesday. And ahead of this one, he caught up with Crags in the studio just a few hours ago. Yes, I'm joined by the county manager, John Hughes, in the studio. First of all, John, Happy New Year from everyone at RCFC TV. Now, we don't want to look back too much, but I have to say, what the way to end 2020 on Wednesday night at your old stomping ground, Easter Road, with a great 2-0 victory. Yep, we were absolutely delighted, but that's the standard that we're trying to set at the club. A fantastic team performance. The pleasing thing is, is keeping a clean sheet and nicking the goals. And it was a, it was a game in really two halves. I felt that after the first 10 minutes, we were a little bit nervous, but everybody as good as Hibs. Got our goal in the second half, we knew Hibs would come at us. The shape had to be solid and we could nick one on a counter-attack and we did that. So, And then after that, I didn't feel it, we, it was any... We were, look, we were never going to lose a goal. It felt like that. But one swallow doesn't make a summer, you know. And I've said that to the players. It was a case of getting their feet firmly back on the ground. Uh, a few home truths and get ready to go again today. A whole different uh, football match against a St Johnston team, you know, are dogged, some good footballers in there, so, you know, we'll have to go again. Have you noticed a, a change in their attitude or a change in their body language from getting that victory? Because it's been a long time in the league. In terms of noticing it, I, I know where you're coming from, but it, it has to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm wanting that, I have, to, you know, a lot of bit, of bit of belief, a bit of togetherness. Um, it has to happen for us to to keep climbing, winning winning games and climbing the league. Uh, and that's what I've said to them, it's all about character and spirit um, in terms of, 
you know, you're playing against St Johnston today, you know, it has to be your cup final. Mm. Uh, your, your mentality has to be your cup final. And if you're sitting in a house last night and at any time in the night you've not thought about the game today and you wake up in the morning and then you say, I think it's too late. You know, you really need to be focused. And that's what we've asked of them. There's a real togetherness. Um, you know, I was in terms of my own decisions, tossing the throne, do you keep a winning team? I'm changing it. You know, it's horses for courses, change a team to go and try and... Mm -hmm. Uh, win a football match um, and hopefully you know we can get start turning this place into a fortress because I think our away forum is better mm. than our home forum. And the changes, there's three changes, explain why that's came about? Well we think doing a lot of the work and um, I felt if I start with young Josh, young Josh got sent off but even uh, before he got sent off he's been in the deep end too long. Mm. He needs to, you know his learning curve is to bring him out and have a right good look at it. Um, it could have easily if Carlos just tweaked his hamstring a wee bit, just a wee. So when I'm looking at that left back position, uh, lacking, although as a left midfielder, I just feel my full backs have got on the ball uh, a lot today. Um, it'll be a full back game. And if my wingers can bring, ping, uh, keep the, the St Johnston full backs back the park, I think man, they're lacking and Naismith will get on the ball. So they two come in. And I know Big Draper, you know, he's, he owes me. He owes me for the last time he got sent off. And when you're talking to Big Drapes, it's just that nod and the look that he gives you back. So I know what I'm going to get. Uh, and I've said to him, don't be trying too hard. Uh, so, f so as you say, three changes and hopefully they, uh, they work for us and we can go and win the game. It must be good for you to get those first three points because you're trying to convince the players just to believe and trust in you a little bit more convince them I'm actually twisting their arm <laughs> uh, honestly but that's it it's the messages are, are we're constantly hammering on the same messages you know we're consistent with the shape and the messages and they have to believe they have to take ownership mm -hmm. and responsibility and hopefully that'll be the case today John all the best this afternoon thanks very much all Well, you can feel the footballing passion rippling off John Yogi Hughes there as ever. Craggs, I got the sense there that he's keen for this not to be a, a flash in the pan. He wants and he needs his team to back up one victory with another today. Listen, I think we've touched on it already, but, you know, when you get a new post as a manager, you want to try and get a positive result as quick as you can, just to try and give the players that lift so that they trust and believe in what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're asking of them. And the longer that goes without getting that lift, players can become deflated easily. So I think getting that win Wednesday night will have just reaffirmed what he's wanting to do, what he's looking for. And he touched on it, freshening his team up. I think that just keeps everybody on their toes and gives other players an opportunity to come in and perform and do very well. Well, John was good enough to effectively give away his team lines to us there a couple of hours before a match. So hopefully that didn't uh, find the eyeballs of any prying St Johnston managerial staff. Let's take a look then at that home lineup this afternoon. There are three changes in total from the team that beat Hibernian in Easter Roads on Wednesday night. In come Ross Draper, who's back from suspension in midfield. Charlie Lacken, who's going to be deployed in a slightly unfamiliar role of left back, the Birmingham City loanee, normally a midfielder. And Jason Naismith making his second debut after returning to the club from Peterborough United at right back out go Alex Jakovici, Carlo Tramarco, both of them injured and Jordan Tilson dropping to the bench. Callum, obviously I'm going to slightly compromise you here because I know you would want to be in that team rather than, yeah. <laughs> than up here talking about it. But it's it's bold, it's brave, it's interesting from John Hughes. What will you be looking to do within that formation today? I think you'll want us to, to start the game well. I think it's key that... Um, we get the first goal. I think when we get the first goal in the game, um, we tend to win the game and do well. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot more difficult when you're going behind and you're chasing the game um, to go and win it. So I think it, by the looks of things, I mean you've got Charlie Lacken playing left back, very attacking player. Um, great to have him back fit. Um, so it looks really like a really attacking lineup. Um, but all the lads who have come in, I mean we've got a lot of depth in the squad, uh, a lot of competition. So once everyone's back fit, it's going to be even harder for a picker team. But um, at least he's got those, those players that utilise and uh, hopefully they can do the business today. Yeah, he spoke about the needs as well earlier on to, to remove Josh Reed from the firing line. Young defender, very talented, still just 18. And of course, a local boy from Dingwall, which is a, a huge success story for the club. But he's had a difficult time of it of late. He was a frustrating night against Celtic. He was sent off against St Mirren, as we know. How important is it for, for you guys as, as his defensive colleagues, as senior defenders, 
to put an arm around him, to coach him through, to make sure that he's not unduly troubled by this difficult spell? Yeah, I think it's 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 the whole squad as a whole. I mean, um, we've got a great change room here and all the lads look after each other and got each other's backs. But Josh has been incredible since he's come in. I think we saw it last season, being at the club behind the scenes, how he was, he, he trained with the first team and his performance in the reserve team. Um, so he's, he's earned that place playing this season and he's done really well. But like you say, he's young, he's inexperienced. So there's going to be games where, where he has a tough time. Um, it's all about him kind of looking back at it and, and realising what he has done right, what he's done wrong. Um, and then trying to put it into practice and training and get himself back in the team. So sometimes it's good for a young boy to, to sit on the sidelines and, and watch more experienced boys. He's had Culture Mark will play Wednesday night, who had a really good performance. Um, is someone he can definitely learn a lot off. Um, and Colo helps him out all the time. So I think Josh has got a massive and a really bright future ahead of him. Um, it's just all about learning now for him. Yeah, well, it is, as you say, Callum, a very attacking lineup from John Hughes this afternoon. Let's just remind ourselves of how Hibs were put to the swords on Wednesday night in Leith. Some fantastic attacking play and a couple of really well taken goals, Craggs. Well, it was, and, you know, I think it was seven passes right from Ross Maynard. The pitch. And this is where it came right or good for Ollie Shaw and Harry Payton because they started the game a little bit sloppily. They were giving up cheap possession. Their final ball wasn't really good. But Harry Payton's involved initially getting the ball into Ollie Shaw. He goes and gets the ball back from Ollie after the hold-up play. And then from then, the team grew in the game. There was so much belief. You could see it coming through the players. They trusted in what they were doing. And Ollie Shaw's a natural poacher. You know, that's the one aspect that maybe this season where County have lacked. They haven't had that ruthless streak in front of goal. They've had plenty of opportunities. And Jermaine Hilton, you know, taking people on, being positive in the play. So it all just came together. And it was a really strong performance and one that I really enjoyed watching. Really assured, as I said earlier on, and there's no doubt if they can do that again, they'll win more games. Yeah, well, there was plenty of attacking incision, but there was a lot of defensive solidity as well. Hibs limited to long-range shots, unable to put their foot in the ball and carve teams open as they have done this season. Ross Laidlaw, as we're about to see here, only really called into action from some hopeful balls into the box and from a couple of free kicks. Listen, he, he's, he's been in a battle, hasn't he, along with Ross Duhan to yeah. you know, stay on the side. He's managed to stay on the side and he probably felt he might have been busier going back to Easter Road because of the attacking threat of Nisbet and Doidge and Martin Boyd and Joe Newell. He thought, you know, we could be under the cosh, we'll have to make save after save. But he was a very efficient in everything that he'd done. I think he you know, gave the back four confidence. I think they gave him confidence because he didn't have an awful lot to do. So it worked well. But, you know, clean sheets have been hard to come by. The problem in this season has been when they've had the clean sheet, they haven't backed it up with another one. And that must be the challenge for Ross Laidlaw and the back four this afternoon. Yeah. Has that been a, a big focus in training this week, Callum, defensively? I know you've not had a massive amount of time, just three days between games, but defensively, Yogi, obviously a former centre-half of great repute yeah. himself, yeah. loved the challenge in his day. What, what's that been like this week? No, I think that, that's been key for us, not just this season. Last season, it was something we knew off the back of last season we had to put right, was, was the goals against... Um, and yeah, Stephen's right there. We, we need to start putting these clean sheets together. We've got the players there who have done really well, and it, it, it tends to be a one off mistake when we lose goals. It's not teams cutting us open in great play. Um, it, it tends to be mistakes here and there from, from different players. So um, that's key. And for us as defenders, that's what we're here to do. It's, it's like scoring a goal, keeping a clean sheet for us. And that's what we want to do week in, week out. And um, the lads that are in there now want to stay to claim to keep their tops and keep their shirts. Clean sheets is what it's all about. Um, and hopefully today we'll do it again and give us a good platform to go and win the game and score more goals. Yeah, we've picked out a couple of key attacking threats in the county lineup for you this afternoon as well. Firstly, Craig's a man you'll know well, Jermaine Hilton, mm. formerly of Motherwell, signed late in the window for county. And under John Hughes, he's had a couple of starts now, obviously set up that goal for Ollie Shaw that killed the game against Hibs on Wednesday. How impressed have you been by him in recent weeks? And how important is he with his pace and his trickery? Well, he, he's something different that the club from everybody else. You know, he's a good dribbler. He can eliminate opponents. He got good vision in the final third. He's creative. And there was a glimpse on Wednesday night of what's to come yeah. or potentially to come. And I think that was the biggest criticism at Motherwell. And people say it's a winger's thing. You know, they're inconsistent. But they shouldn't be. You know, they should be demanding off themselves. He's the go-to player in the final third to say, go and make something happen. Go and be creative. Give us a chance of scoring a goal. So he has to replicate that. You can't just do it and pat himself in the back. Football doesn't allow you to do that. There's always another game around the corner for you and you're judged in that game. You're not judged on what happened Wednesday night. You're going to be judged on what you're doing today. So that's going to be the challenge for 
uh, Jermaine this afternoon. Yeah, a sweet moment as well, Callum, for Ollie Shaw back to his old stomping ground as well as John Hughes. Let go by Hibbs in January to come up here. The chat was at the time that the Hibs chief executive, Leanne Dempster, rated him very highly. I think she'd said that he was one of the best young strikers in Europe, which was a quote that has been used against her in, the, yeah. in recent weeks. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's been really encouraging to see his natural finishing, to see him getting among the goals this season and to see him growing in confidence. Yeah, it's been great. Him and, and Jermaine, the pair of them, have, they've uh, bided their time to get an opportunity in the team. Um, and the both of them, when they've come in, have, um, have grabbed it with both hands. It's, it is, it's great to see. Uh, it's, obviously, goals have been hard to come by this season. Um, but when Ollie's played, he's tended to score. Um, and also different types of goals as well. I mean, there's a header out here, brilliant finish. Yeah. Uh, obviously, on Wednesday as well, he's, um, his natural instinct now was to pull off the defenders and, and get space for himself, and he, and he got a tap in off the back of it. So these are the kind of players that we need to step up right now. Um, we need to start scoring more goals. I mean, we create goals. It's the, it's the chances, sorry, but it's, it's, it's converting them, which has been what we've uh, let ourselves down with a bit this season. So it's great to see players like, like, like that having the influence on the game now. Yeah, very much so. Lots of attacking weaponry, lots to be positive about in that Ross County lineup. We'll bring you the St Johnston team news and take you through some of their key attacking threats after the break. Help raise funds for the Ross County Youth Academy when you shop, eat out and what's more at no extra cost to you. Sign up to fantasticfanatics.com and securely register your everyday debit or credit cards. You'll also be automatically entered into ongoing cash prize draws. Retailers include B&Q, Curry's, JD Sports and more, with a percentage going to the Staggies each time you spend. Visit fantasticfanatics.com and help fund the future of Ross County. Well, we've seen how County are lining up and shaping up this afternoon, so let's take a look at what the visitors St Johnston are bringing to the table here in the Highlands. There are three changes as well for the Perth Saints from their 0-0 draw with Hamilton Academical at the weekend. Murray Davidson, Craig Conway and Michael O'Halloran coming in for Stevie May, David Wotherspoon and Liam Craig. Craggs, where are the, the major danger men in the St Johnston team? Michael O'Halloran jumps out, doesn't he? It is. It's a difficult one because St Johnston have kind of caught me unawares a little bit. I think they haven't won a league game since the 6th of November, Friday the 6th, when, yeah, nine, whenever nine it was the night that Livingston came here and, yep. and County got a point, which is a long time. So during that, or just before that, they were in a really good run of form and it looked as if they turned a corner, they were going to be pushing top six. So it just shows what a big game it is for both sides. I imagine they're going to want to come and be hard to beat, hard to play against, be resilient, try and play in the counter-attack, the pace of O'Halloran, and the pace of Kane. Craig Conway's got an eye for a pass, an eye for a goal. So that's where County have to be careful. As much as you want to be in possession of the ball, you can't overcommit. And that's where, you know, Callum will tell you, and I'll tell you myself as a centre half, you've got to communicate then, you've got to switch on. When you attack, you've got to make sure you put other people in position so you don't get caught in the counter-attack. So that's going to be another challenge this afternoon. Yeah, it is really important, Callum, especially. We talk about games against Hibs and Celtic and Rangers as being almost bonuses. Of course you want to win them, but you're not necessarily expected to. St Johnston, two points above you just now. This is a big opportunity against a team struggling for form to really back up what you did in midweek. Yeah, definitely. I think, like we've said there, a lot of teams who are on a poll and have gone under the radar recently because because of ourselves and, yeah. uh, and the spotlight's been us, on us. So um, it's a big game and there's a lot of confidence we can take from the previous game down the road um, at McDermott where we won 1-0 and it, yep. was, it was a horrible game. It was a really gritty performance and sometimes as a, def as a back four, as a goalkeeper, they're the kind of wins you thrive off. You, you win the game 1-0, your back's against the wall. Um, and even we'd, we'd take that again right now, we'd take that now, we'd take the clean sheet, the goal and the yeah. three points. Um, and that does breed confidence throughout the team. Uh, having that solid base at the back is, is what we can really build on. Um, so it's a big game for both teams, it really is. But um, I think we should be confident going into the game. I think teams will come up here now thinking we're, we're a different prospect. Yeah. We've got the new manager in, we've had good performances again. And they know the threats we carry. We've got a very good squad, probably one of the better ones in the division in mm -hmm. my eyes. Um, so hopefully we can we can get the three points today and, and jump above them in the table. Yeah, no Stevie May today for St Johnston, their top scorer benched for this encounter. But I guess if you were playing today, you'd have your sights trained on, on Michael O'Halloran with his pace, his incisive running and, and his finishing as well. Yeah, no, he's, he's a handful. His pace especially... Um, can cause you all sorts of problems, not just with the ball as almost a decoy runner. 
create space for other people. The same with Kane. I think he's maybe underestimated a bit. I think he's very good. Um, can pop up with a goal. I think a big miss for them is is Kerr missing at the back. Yeah. Uh, the captain's out. He's been he's been very good this season. Um, the fact to change that back three that's been an ever present. So hopefully we can capitalise on that going going into the game. Yeah, they do have one of the, the smallest, if not the smallest, senior squad. I think they've only got twenty senior mm-hmm. players. If you discount academy guys in their team just now, Crags. Ali McCann, really exciting young player, compatriot of yours. Yeah. You've watched him for club and country this season. What does he bring to the party? Well, it's funny because he's he's small in stature. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not the you know the biggest, the strongest, but he gets about the game. He's efficient with the ball. He's very competitive. You know, for someone so small, he's better in the ball than what I thought. I watched him playing for Northern Ireland against Austria. I watched him playing against Romania and in international football, and he didn't look out of place. You know, he's yeah. one that's came through the system there. They're looking and thinking we could potentially sell him on for good money. So, St. Johnson fans, you know, without trying to get him away from your club, enjoy him while he's here. But it should be a good battle up against someone like Stephen Kelly, Ross Draper, Ian Vaggers, Murray Davidson in there to support him. Yep. So that's a vital area of the pitch that whoever can get on top in that area normally allows your team to be in the ascendancy. But there's no doubt Ali McCann will be at the heart of everything. Yeah, is that where you see this game being won and lost in that that those midfield trenches, I guess, Chris? Well, you think of Wednesday night and that's where Hibbs only had two centre midfield players oh. and County had three. Mm-hmm. And that's where they dominated the ball. I thought, you know, Vaggers brought in great composure. Uh, Stephen Kelly was was a ball carrier in midfield and Jordan Tilson went about and was tenacious and broke the play up. So there was a really good balance in there. And if you get that balance right today, it means your fullbacks can get forward because you've got a grip of the game. Your attacking players can gamble into the box because you've got grip of the game. So if you don't have that, then it means you're almost defending a lot of the time. So vital part of the pitch, no doubt about it. Great stuff. Well, Callum, thank you very much for joining us. Crags, it's almost that time. The players behind us, as you can see, are starting to make their way into the changing rooms to make their final preparations for this afternoon's game. It's time for us to head down to the commentary gantry and we'll join you from there for full live coverage of Ross County versus St Johnston on RCFC TV in just a few minutes' time. We'll see you soon. When I hold the card, I'm standing with my family. When I hold the card, I'm standing with my teammates. When I hold the card, I'm standing with my neighbours. When I hold the card, I stand with my brothers and sisters. We're standing with everyone who's had to endure racial prejudice in their lives. Racism Racism comes comes in many forms, some clear, some more subtle. It affects not just the victim, but friends, families and entire communities. No one is born with it, and tolerance is taught but it can be on top. To bring about change, we can't be afraid to take the first step. We fail when we fail to try. We are supporting Show Racism the Red Card, our education charity. Now more than ever, they need your support to give our future generation the tools to challenge prejudice, hatred and discrimination. It's not enough to be not racist. We all must be anti-racist. Education is the key. Sometimes you have to search far and wide for the answer. But for creative video production, the answer's on your doorstep. DP Digital Media, the other top team in the Highlands. Raise funds for the Ross County Youth Academy when you shop, eat out and what's more at no extra cost to you. Sign up to fantasticfanatics.com and securely register your everyday debit or credit cards. You'll also be automatically entered into ongoing cash prize draws. Retailers include B&Q, Curry's, JD Sports and more, with a percentage going to the staggies each time you spend. Visit fantasticfanatics.com and help fund the future of Ross County.